another episode of Hard Factor. It is Tuesday, February 19th, the day you can finally buy your very own Hard Factor Good Morning Coffee Mug from the Barstool Store. Yeah, better yet, buy 100, give them out as convenient gifts whenever you forget to buy somebody something for a present in the future, because if you're like me, you need that kind of shit. Just have one, have them on hand like greeting cards. I'm buying at least 10 just so it stays on the store. Yeah, yeah. baby. There you go. All right, our top stories for the day. Pat is going to do one about Venezuela, socialism's last great hope. You are on notice, Venezuela and socialism. Mm, yes. Uh, Wes is going to do one about West Virginia, a West Virginia FEMA scammer. Yeah, there's a little uh, FEMA karma for you. Mm. Uh, I'm going to do one about a lacrosse kid who has a very big head. And Mark is going to take us through a lightning round of other headlines. Take it away, Pat. All right, guys. So yesterday, President Trump gave a speech urging the Venezuelan military officials to back the country's self-declared interim president, Juan Guaido, uh, and allow humanitarian aid to flow into Venezuela, which is still sitting on Venezuela's doorstep like an unclaimed Amazon package. How much aid are we talking? Mike? It's still on that bridge. It's still on that bridge. A lot of aid, like bro. Puerto Rico aid? or Ooh, You think? Mm. Well, no, we don't know. Did, did Puerto Rico get aid? I don't that's what, that's what yeah, I'm joking. Got Not a yeah. lot. They got <laughs> toilet paper thrown at their heads. Something. Yeah, yeah it's, it's quite a bit of aid, and they need it because they're starving, and it's, it's medicine. It's quite a too. bit. Yeah. Uh, as you guys may remember, Gaido woke up one morning last month and said, I'm president, just like <laughs> Neo did after he learned Kung Fu from the Matrix. Yeah. Uh, that's and how it works as, in Venezuela, you know? That's how it works, baby. You, yeah. pre you say you're president, you are president. Um, yeah. Just his luck, a whole bunch of other Venezuelan people were like, oh, yeah, you are president, um, thereby functionally ousting the current, then current president, Maduro. I always thought you were president. Oh, I'm so <laughs> glad you said that because so, who has control of like the tanks right now? Maduro. So Maduro okay. currently has the Venezuelan military, and that's that's more or less what Pretty Trump's important. speech was about. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Pretty so, important. So Trump gave the speech from Miami, a, a spot that he chose because it was the closest he could get to Venezuela w without leaving the country. Right. Yeah. Uh, and, as and assumedly, it would make it easier for Venezuelans to hear him. From well, there. if you're going to give a speech yeah. about Venezuela, you got to be tropical. So yeah, I, you I think tropical. that's a solid choice. Yeah, it was it was smart. Uh, yeah. He shared his fe feelings about Maduro, calling him a, quote, Cuban puppet, which doesn't sound all that bad. But in South America, calling someone a puppet is the equivalent of saying someone's a silly bitch in the United States. You might as well have said I'm going to fuck his mom. Big, <laughs> big, big mom. Oh, no, I'm glad he didn't say that because we'd be at war with Venezuela. Big mustache on that puppet. Yeah, huge mustache. <laughs> Trump warned Maduro. <laughs> Trump warned Maduro directly, saying the eyes of the entire world are upon you to the melody of the UT fight song or I've been working on the railroad. If you. Uh, yeah. The eyes of the world are upon you. Anyway, he it's spoke. A creepy. It's a creepy fight song. It really it is. Was, it is a creepy fight song. We're Austinites. You know, like it's a creepy ass fight song. Yeah. There's a certain demographic of UT students that love that song because they're humming it to themselves while they're peeping. Uh, he then spoke directly to the Venezuelan military officials who are still backing Maduro, saying you must not follow Maduro's orders. It's not clear whether the military officials from not America are going to listen to him, but we don't know. More on that soon. Well, they better. Uh, the president then turned his attention to public enemy number two after tired immigrants, socialism. Uh, he first set the record straight to any of the American people and any socialists who might have any big ideas saying to those who entry to those who would impose socialism on the United States. We again deliver a very simple message. America will never be a socialist country, which was met by a raucous applause. Mm. People people love that shit. People love hearing that we're not going to be a socialist country. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's like, we're not going to give out anything for free. Don't worry. You know how his base hates that. Oh, they hate oh, yeah. shit. <laughs> uh, he then went on to shame the political theory by saying, quote, socialism, by its nature, does not respect borders. We know it's huge on borders. It does not respect the boundaries or the sovereign rights of its citizens or its neighbors. It's always seeking to expand, to encroach, and to subjugate others to its will. So the twilight hour of socialism has arrived in our hemisphere. Yeah. I mean, well, the PR war against crime, socialism, and basically anything not found in Gary Busey's trailer in Black Sheep is like it's being pulled off to perfection by the president. What a hell of a trailer that was, by yeah. the way. Yeah, I didn't know socialism was, was such a threat, but I'm, I'm glad that he's out getting ahead of it before oh, it invades. Oh, yeah, this is part of the plan, you know. Yeah, you big socialism guy. I, I didn't know. I didn't know. I mean, I don't. Right. I don't hear about it much because I, I. I didn't know it was a threat. But you know who likes socialism? Who's that? Dog fuckers. What? Yeah. Yeah. They like to just sit at home all day and take turns fucking dogs. Right, they don't want to go to work. They just want a dog, give them <laughs> things, so they can yeah. have sex with it. I didn't know that was a principle. But look, yeah. you are on notice, socialism. So don't you try anything cute. Let's take it to the internet. 
dog fuckers. Uh, <laughs> Digger Sivma said, they keep pushing this socialist BS at us, and we're going to start pushing back hard. Digger Ooh. looks like the type of guy that's been pushing back hard. Yeah, let's, <laughs> yeah. let's, let's dig into Digger's profile real quick. Yeah. Digger's description on his Facebook profile says, nothing much to say. Let's ride. Let's ride. And then uh, his most recent post was about Jesse Smollett, and it's a meme, and it just looks racist. It's, Only in 2019 would a gay black actor pay Nigerians 4K a piece to buy a rope, throw it around his neck, and beat him up in order to blame white folks. Happy wow. Black History Month. Yeah. This meme looks like if, a, if wow. a swastika was a meme, that's yeah, what it would look like. Exactly. You know when you, yeah, yeah. When it's you, red background, <laughs> white lettering. It just looks like just, a swastika. It just ends Type. with white power. Type. Type. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Someone commented, lol, so true. Oh, nice. oh man. Yeah. Digger. Digger. All right. Digger's a vet. So you guys remember that woman, Pamela Taylor, from the great state of West Virginia who called Michelle Obama a, quote, ape in heels? Yikes. Yikes. I, I, ru- I roughly remember that statement. I didn't remember like who or where. Yeah, but. yikes is right. So she made national headlines because simply because, holy shit, what a racist piece of shit comment that is. And I actually did not know this, but the mayor of Clay County actually liked that comment on social media and said, just made my day, Pam. <laughs> and because of, because of that little exchange, Taylor lost her job and Whaling resigned. But that is not where this story ends. See, it turns out this pig in Walmart sneakers. See what I see what I did I there. Like that. Uh, yeah, there yeah, you go. Yeah, burned her back. Has admitted to defrauding FEMA of over eighteen thousand dollars. And this story not only makes me think, what the fuck, Pamela Taylor, but also what the fuck, FEMA. Um, so back in 2016, Clay County, West Virginia, beautiful place, I'm sure, where Taylor lives, suffered a 1,000 year flood, and many residents lost their homes and were literally homeless. So we didn't it, think it was going to happen. You don't want you don't want to be around a one thousand year flood. That sounds no, bad. It's no. a yeah. bad, bad flood. It's been saving up. <clears throat> so what did Pam do? She filed a false claim that her house was also damaged in the flood and that she had to stay at a rental property, a claim that was approved by FEMA immediately. And Miss Taylor thought she was walking away with some free government cheddar over eighteen thousand, as previously mentioned. So what? wait what wait to check on your claims. Jeez. Yeah, what an yeah. No. I don't think there's any rental properties in Clay County that were that are worth that. Must yeah. be but, two trailers put together. Yeah. Um, but so yeah, FEMA apparently just you know when, when these when these natural disasters happen, people need money immediately, so they just approve these you know claims, and then later they investigate. They don't have time to investigate right. up front. Yeah, right. Yeah, you can't go yeah. in and like with the things of fucking natural disaster area. You right. can't be like, let me take a look right. at your house. They basically um, just cut checks. I mean, they take right. your information. Send a picture and they cut of the, the flooding. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, that's your that's your couch. All right, cool. Um, yeah. so uh, <laughs> but finally, we're gonna get you a new couch. Yeah. That's what FEMA's about. Finally, FEMA decided to do their research and 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 look into the claim and learn that she was entirely full of shit and now she is in deep deep shit. Uh, uh, so at her plea hearing last Tuesday, she agreed to pay back all the money, but now also faces up to thirty years in prison and a five hundred thousand dollar fine because you see FEMA does not have all the money in the world and when you steal and defraud them, you actually take money and relief right out of the hands of people that need it most. Uh, it's like a fact eating all the shrimp at a cocktail party it's selfish it's wrong and it yeah. should be punished and that's exactly what we hope happens to pam but we've all well, done what, it what that's if that. you i do it all the time what if you defraud fema with the intentions on you're, you're on a heater right so you're going to go mm-hmm. on a nice gambling streak you're going to make more money back and you'll pay fema back more than you defrauded them so they could help more people what Throw if you knew black. you were going to go on a heater no. If you knew, if that's an insane thing to think. I love you when you, can, you win. <laughs> yeah. This lady, because, this lady's just ballsy and brazen. Like she, she looks like yeah. the kind of mom that drops a racist joke on you and her six-year-old son, like in the drive-through lane at McDonald's. But then she explains yeah. to you real quick why she's not a racist. Like she looks, yeah. she looks like she has every Paula Dean book that's ever yeah. come out. She claims yeah. that she's got like a couple friends that are black and all that, so it's yeah. all good. Thir- Thirty years in prison is harsh as fuck for this, though. For it's, eighteen it's, grand, it's, a it's an extreme sentence. It's that's the max. She's not going to get that five hundred thousand dollars. Set well. an example. Yeah, true. It's true. You don't defraud FEMA. You're right. a real right. fucking people. A-hole. People dying. People homeless. They it, need their money. If she gets a slap on the wrist, then everyone is just going to defraud FEMA. Yeah, you know? which is what they've been doing true. apparently. Right. Plus, she has that history of being a total fucking see you next yeah. Tuesday. They do get so, defrauded quite a bit. So. Uh, going to the internet, Phillips says, I would sentence her to continue living in West Virginia. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, That's mean. Bird. West Virginia West Virginia has its spots just like any other state, but it is a gorgeous state. I we we grew up right next to it and vis- I visited it a number of times. It's real, absolutely beautiful. Real quick, West Virginia is the type of state you can buy liquor in a gas station. I went drove I believe so. forty minutes into West Virginia before I got to a gas station. I and mean, they have sports gambling now. It's great. That's always yeah. a good sign of a good a good bottomless. State. 
Yeah, yeah. Bottomless, bottomless strip clubs. When you see liquor, when we see liquor bottles in a gas station and no <laughs> bottoms on yeah. strippers, it's bring your own bottoms. It's, it's, a, it's a BYOB situation if you want them to wear them. Check your not morals. Check your morals in Virginia when you're going to West yeah. Virginia. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about the NCAA hating big-headed athletes. All right. Wheaton College freshman Alex Chu, 19 years old, 265-pound goalie. Which Whoa. is huge for lacrosse. Some some may say a unit. Uh, he's under attack by the big bad NCAA. Alex is a member of the Wheaton lacrosse team, but once the season begins, he's only going to be allowed to run wind sprints and not help the team win any games by actually playing in them. Yeah, and at that size, he's probably not great at wind sprints. Mm-mm. Yeah, right. Yeah, he's not. That's Hates not his him. forte. Yeah. The breeze so why? Sprints, really. Yeah. Why does the NCAA hate Alex? You may ask. Why? Because Why? there is no NCAA approved lacrosse helmets that fit his head. <laughs> <laughs> is, this, is, this, is this discrimination? What do you mean? Yeah, it's big dis- head discrimination? It's disgusting if you ask me. Yeah. <laughs> what I, do you mean there's no helmets that fit his head? <laughs> so the only, so I guess. The, Do they take all the padding out of one of them? They took the foam out. It still didn't fit on him. There's only these two companies, I guess, that are totally NCAA approved Cascade and um, Warrior. And not none of their models fit his head. In high school. He used a special helmet from a local lacrosse manufacturer that combined the front half and the back half of their largest models. <laughs> he, had a, he had a prescription helmet? He had a fucking limo helmet. <laughs> they're wel- they had a welder. They had a- they're welding this kid's helmet together. But that's oh, not geez. NCAA approved, right? Uh, no, it's of course not. not. Right. He needs, so he needs, he needs Cascade or Warrior uh, to help him get a fitted helmet. Problem yeah, is... Problem is, Warrior basically laughed his problem out of their office while lighting <laughs> cigars with $100 bills, saying it would be, quote, cost prohibitive to retool factory machines and make Alex a larger model. Yeah. They said, get out of here, you big-headed freak. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. going to be tough, tough to convince the CEO to make a model that's going to sell one unit. Yeah, so it's not going to be their best seller, <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, exactly. I just uh, feel it's bad called for, the shoe. I feel bad for Alex's mom. Yeah, but there is hope. Ooh. And there's He's rumors like, that Cascade, the other company, has worked on this problem with another giant-headed lacrosse star at the <laughs> University of Albany last year. So a pioneer. Yeah. Uh, but speaking of Alex's mom, she's tried calling Cascade, but so far they've been unwilling to listen. Uh, <laughs> she says, I've paid my debt. No, you pay yours. Yeah. She's like, I spent over fucking like $20,000 for this kid playing lacrosse. God damn it. And Let him f- give me a helmet. And forget about the reconstructive surgery. Yeah. Yeah, Alex Chu's head is apparently just over 25 inches. So who knows? That's his own description. So who knows how big it really is? Um, is that, what? Is, is that a huge dome? Like, how big is a normal head? I think, Pat, like, 23 Pat, is a normal. the guy can't wear a helmet. <laughs> of course, yeah. it's a giant yeah, but dome. I don't know if he's, like, a it's bitch a or something. Like. No, he doesn't look that, that crazy, like, if you look at his pictures. It has, it's a large head, but it's not, like, I don't know, not no. Noteworthy, I don't think. Well, he's does, 265. Does the head stand straight up or is it like tilt to the side? <laughs> he's so heavy. Yeah, does he run at an angle? Yeah. Does he there's, have a neck brace? There, there's one other Boston based company that may be able to help him. And also, now that he's made the headlines, Cascade says that they're going to reach out to him as well. Uh, the Cascade CEO has got to be so angry that they've become the default big head company and not Warrior. Yeah, that's yeah. true. They yeah. lost that battle. Warrior, good call, laughing them out of the building. Yeah, Be- yeah. Being Warrior the, being the bad guys immediately. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Just <laughs> releasing the bad guy statement right away. Well, I know you can hear me with that huge head and huge ears. Not going to happen. <laughs> 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 All right. Let's take it to the internet uh, where uh, most of the comments actually on the internet were about how, um, oh, this isn't news. This isn't news. Nobody should talk about this. I think it's kind of funny, actually. But. Here is a great internet comment from Anthony Sierra Mello Jr. He says, I have this problem myself. Can't find hard hat to fit me. I have to special order my 4XL motorcycle helmets. Never wore a hat a Come day on. in my life. <laughs> Come on, Anthony. Oh, poor Anthony. 4XL motorcycle Can helmet? someone make a wish yeah. this guy and get him a hat that fits? 4XL. Shit. I got to see a picture of this guy. 
<laughs> yeah, I looked. I looked. Yeah. There's, there's there's no pictures. There's no it's like. Only, there's no pictures of me in like a watermelon field it's anywhere. Just got a Tom Brady. <laughs> <laughs> it's just Tom Brady. For reference. For reference. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Next to a honey crisp apple. Yeah. Two, two honey crisp. Yeah. <laughs> Big heads are hilarious. We can all be That's on awesome. board with that. That's a funny thing to make fun of. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> let's get to a few stories we didn't get to earlier. A California man that looks like a poor man's version of Thomas Hayden Church. You know, the guy from Sideways or or Wings. He was Lowell and Wings. Yeah. Sweet, really yeah. sweet eyes. Yeah. Right. Lowell well, and Wings? Yeah, the TV show Wings, Thomas Hayden Church. Mm. Uh, anyways, this California dude was arrested for a hate crime for assaulting a 7-Eleven clerk. Uh, John Crane, that's the name of the guy who assaulted the clerk, the, the Thomas Hayden Church lookalike, punched the clerk and then threw hot coffee at him. Uh, Crane admitted to the police that he did it because he hates Muslims. So uh, oh. unfortunately for Crane, the 7-Eleven employee was not Muslim. He was Sikh. Uh, so when told that the man was Sikh, John Crane said, I don't care if that Muslim had a cold. I still hate him. <laughs> <laughs> Good but joke, it's chic. <laughs> good joke. It's a pretty good joke. Yeah, I like it. Don't Muslims. have a lot of time to research these shows. I thought that was pretty clever. They, they, hate, like it. they hate caffeine. Don't you hate it when uh, you get a severe headache and then have a seizure, which causes doctors to put you in a medically induced four-day coma, during which time you give birth to a surprise baby? <laughs> that's the worst. Yeah. Don't you hate that? Terrible. August 2016. Yeah, that's what happened to Ebony Stevenson, an 18-year-old from Oldham, England. Um, so yeah, she's like woke up and she's like, where am I? Oh, and why is there a baby in my hands? Oh, it's mine. Fuck. Oh, uh, apparently she didn't have a bump showing at any point and she didn't miss a period at all because she had a rare condition called didelphus where the baby was hiding in a second uterus the whole time. Okay. Uh, yeah. I, th I think she might have a condition called Lyris. She just thought right. she had terrible gas for nine months. Yeah. Right. Where just does the baby go? It's gotta go somewhere. Like <laughs> Like, yeah, she's a small girl. Like, the baby's clearly moving around. I, I, don't, I don't get it. Yeah. Anyways, it's a rare condition that happens in 1 in 3,000 women. We're men, so we, maybe it's true. We don't know. Um, so, yeah, she had two pairs of gloves the whole time. Um, she, uh, anyways, mother and child are doing fine. The baby was 7 pounds and 10 ounces at birth, so that's pretty big. And uh, like we said earlier, uh, she's a small girl, so I don't care how many trick uteruses you have. I mean, come on. No, she knew. Yeah, come seven on. pound, ten ounce baby is kicking hard as shit in your uterus. She had nine periods. I she mean, knew. Yeah. I mean, come Ooh. on. That baby wasn't going to be, you know, but she around looks happy. too long. She looks happy. The baby's great. Great. Everyone's hospital. happy and healthy, so it's all good. Uh, at least 16 states are suing over President Trump's declaration of a national emergency for a border invasion. Uh, California is amongst them, of course. So big day for... Big day for California here on Hard Factor Outro. That's two out of three stories for California. Uh, California Attorney General Xavier Becquera has sued Trump dozens of times already, so he wasn't going to like miss an opportunity here. Obviously, he was going to sue. And Trump actually predicted that he was going to be sued at his press conference on Friday when he was like, I'm going to go and I'm going to sign the final papers as soon as I get into the Oval Office, and we'll have a national emergency at that point, and then we'll be sued, and they will sue us in the Ninth Circuit, and we will possibly get a bad ruling, and then we'll get another bad ruling, and then we'll end up in the Supreme Court, and hopefully we'll get a fair shake, and we'll win in the Supreme Court. <laughs> just like the ban, that's pretty. That's pretty much how he said it. Like that's just, that's yeah. that's a good example of off teleprompter Trump, which is my favorite. Kind yeah, of Trump it was movie. awesome. Just yeah, like real. Like, great he's video. giving you the the thought process of how, but he's going to lose three lawsuits then win the big one. Um, yep, that's it for a hard factor. So as you may recall, we are running a bit of a promotion or bribe here at Hard Factor. Every week that we get at least one hundred five star iTunes reviews, unique ones, new ones, we're going to do a Friday episode or a bonus episode. So far, it's looking like it's going to come down to the wire. So you guys might want to get out there and get the reviews in because the deadline's 5 p.m. Thursday and iTunes takes fucking forever to update. So you really have till Thursday morning. Um, also, as mentioned earlier, we had a brand new awesome coffee mug. Yeah. Hard Factor's yeah. first uh, non-T-shirt. Uh, it's pretty sick. It's so. a hungover smiley face yeah, with, a, with a joint in his mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll be the funniest person in your family son, every right? time you give it away. Yeah, as a gift. Not recommended for people with government jobs. Well, don't bring it to work. Don't bring it to definitely work. Definitely yeah. have yeah, it. It's, a home, it's home. a home mug. It's a yeah, mug it's a home mug. Yeah. Absolutely. So definitely look out for that mug. It's awesome. Uh, do yourself a favor uh, and take some time for you today. And oh, yeah, have a great fucking day.